Okay, let's say you've just purchased some new one and a half coil springs and you might be trapping raccoon or mink or muskrat or fox and you just got them out of the box. They're a little greasy. You know about how to treat your traps, but what about tuning them up? So let's go ahead and set this. This is new out of the box. This one's never been set before and see how it looks. So here we are. I notice there's a burr on top of the dog. And if I bring this down to where it's just shy of the end of the dog, that pan is sticking up a little bit too high. And besides that, that mink could tap dance on there and this thing isn't going to fire. So let's go ahead and tune up this new trap. Now the first thing I'm going to do is Take some of the slop out of this dog. Got a lot of movement back and forth right here. So we'll go ahead and use an old pair of vice grips here. And I'm going to close that slop up just a little bit. Not too much or it, it won't move right, but just a little bit. Let's see if that did it. Much better. Not much back and forth. I notice that the dog here has got a burr on the end of it. We'll go ahead and put that in the vise. I'm going to take a file and knock down that burr. It's right there on top of that. So it's smooth on top. Now it's smooth on top. Next step, where this dog fits into the pan notch, this dog has kind of got a rounded end to it. I'd like to clean that up and have a slanted end to it. So we'll go ahead and put that back in here. And now I'm going to file it down. So I've got a little bit of an angle on there. It doesn't take but a couple of strokes and then just smooth it back up on top. Take it out. And the dog looks real good now. Now that pan shank notch. This thing kind of goes like this. It's rounded and comes in. With that dog in there, when that pan's depressed, it's going to slide over that. I want a quick release. So let's go ahead and file the end of that dog down. That pan shank notch just a little bit on top. Square it up. And with a narrower file. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to flatten this portion right here so it's square. I got a nice square meeting between the two. All right. And we do. Problem is I can't tell because this pan is so hard to move. We've got a nut brass nut and bolt here and I have invested in a nut driver that's going to fit that nut just right and a Phillips screwdriver on the other side and we're going to go ahead and loosen that nut up a little bit and now that pan flops. As a water trapper I want that pan to fall without too much pressure right now. Mink or muskrat. If I was a canine trapper I'd probably wanted a couple three pounds but the way I'm going is I want a free fall and trap. So we'll put that back in the notch here and I see that that pan's going to be high. Let's see how it looks. Okay. Bring it down just before it fires. It is a little bit high and as Jim showed us before we can take that adjuster and we're going to move that towards the pan a little bit and that's going to drop that pan right down. Now let's see what kind of release we have. Oh, that's crisp. That's nice. Well, what if we have an old trap? Let's say Grandpa gave us some old coil springs and he said, oh, they worked just fine over the years, so we'd probably go ahead and clean that dog up there and make sure our notch is square, but 
As you uh, heard earlier, we use these in the trap red class to get the young people used to it. Those coil springs are never going to give that trap enough power you know, to hold an animal. You can pull right out. So that might be the condition that you've got some used traps in. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace those coil springs with some new ones. And power this trap back up and we're going to replace these old coil springs here. So the first thing we want to do is take that pan off and using that nut driver makes life a lot easier than trying to use a pair of pliers. Make sure you keep your equipment and there is the pan. Now, take an old screwdriver here, keeping your fingers out of this area, we're going to pop those old springs off and slide them out. Now, it's important to look at the orientation of these springs and be sure you match up the new ones with the way they're pointed. There is a right and a left coil spring to these. So we'll pull the spring pin out and there are the old springs. Okay, let's go ahead and set the new ones in place. We'll bring those levers up. And if everything goes right, you can smoothly slide that spring pin through both holes. Alright. I'll we'll bring those levers up and using a tool here called the coil spring tool. It's got an opening here and a closed end. We're going to slip that over and crank this back and seat that underneath that spring lever. And the same for the other side. Oh yeah, big difference. Let's go ahead and put our pan back on here. And we have a strong trap. Good to go. Now you do want to look at the end of these levers here. Sometimes if they pop out, you can take your vice grips on here and pull these up just a little bit on both sides to ensure that they're not going to fall out. Otherwise, this trap will be good to go for this fall once we dye it or paint it the color that we want. All right, so let's take a Duke one and a half coil spring. Okay, we have sharpened everything up. We've knocked off the burr there. And as it's set now for muskrat and mink, it probably won't take too much pressure for this thing to fire. Bring it down to the end of the dog and with this trap tester to tell us how much pounds before it fires in one pound increments. I'll put that on there and I can see in less than a pound it will fire. But if I wanted to trap fox or maybe even coyote, I want at least two pounds of pressure on that pan before it fires. That way that K2 
canine is totally committed to the trap. So, we're not going to adjust anything but the nut and the bolt through there. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to tighten it up. I don't think that's enough. Let's try this. See what we've got now. Okay. There's one, two, about two and a half pounds. Now if I wanted to target fox, probably back that off a little bit. If I wanted to target coyote, I could crank it a little bit more. But you can see now that you can adjust that pan so that you'll get your target critter. This is especially important, let's say if you have a lot of possum in the area, you can tighten it up to two to three pounds and that possum shouldn't fire that trap for you.